Welcome back to Snackcast, folks. Hello. So, Jerry's here because Kevin's still on vacation. That's right. Um, you mentioned the other day microplastics. We were talking about salt. Yes. And microplastics were a part of some In types the ocean of salt. and yes. degradation yes. and getting into potentially the fish food supply. Right, right. Right. Well, you sent me down a little deep dive. Oh, man. Well, he, I should call he, he it shallow He went down the dive. abyss. He went right <laughs> down the abyss. Man, this is like such a layered topic yeah. of microplastics, <laughs> and apparently the next phase down is nanoplastics. Right. I'm glad you didn't do it in the middle of the night, because it is one of those things. I mean, you go on a rabbit trail, and then sometimes it's like four in the morning, and you've been studying and reading for hours. And I'm at that age where my brain likes to do that in the middle of right. the night. So, <laughs> you know. Yes. Um, yeah, I've totally given up in the mornings. If it's past 4.30, mm-hmm. And the brain is spinning. I just get up and start my day. Why fight that fight? Yeah. Just just yeah. get it going. It's not worth it. I'm with you. So in the research that I did, mm-hmm. there seemed to be a couple main areas. So consumption, which you kind of referenced, yes. where our food supply is directly maybe getting contaminated. Yes. Right? Yes. Another area was um, new plastics. Mm-hmm. Um, think like water bottles that okay. we drink from. Okay. Um, think food delivery, you know, the Chinese delivery from down the street or whatever that comes in the plastic containers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even down to, and not to throw a specific brand under the bus, it's just the brand we have at home, but like yeah. the Ziplocs where you get, you know, three or four with the blue sure. lid. Sure. It's like saying Q-tips. It's like, right. you know, we don't say swabs. We say right. the, the brand name. Sure. Right. Yes. Yeah. So then maybe the most important is reheating the microwaving of food and plastics. Right. Understanding the, what happens there, how it change, you know, the, on a molecular level, right. which I don't have a full comprehension of, but everything I've seen right. is... Well, and, and so one, <laughs> one piece, it wasn't even like peer reviewed, but right, it talked right. about being dangerous to drink from a water bottle you left in your car. Especially if you, if it sat directly in sunlight, as I understand, it does change the composition of the water. I didn't know you were an expert. I'm not an Let's expert. Let's go. No, I'm not an expert. I just <laughs> happened to be having a conversation one time. A friend of mine sees me, stops my car. I'm saying hello, talking through the passenger window. And there's a water bottle in my car. And she said, how long has that been sitting there? And I said, since Tuesday. And she's like, don't drink that. And that's where I first learned to not uh, touch the water bottles that have sat in sunlight. Well, it's it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it it almost seems... It's sobering. It makes me... It gave me a little chill up the spine. Well, my question is, yeah, how how much are the... The people who are supposed to be safeguarding this really paying attention, and and are they running? Well, we are talking big business. In fairness, it is hard to kind of big business, big government, big industry. It's hard to sometimes navigate to. It's almost like we talked about uh, documentaries we've seen in the past, where even all some of the organizations that should shoot straight with information about types of foods can't fully divulge. But maybe, right. You know, so it gets very murky, and I think this possibly could be one of those Get, conversations. And then double that with, you know, I th- we've talked about wheat in the past mm-hmm, and how mm-hmm. over 100 years it's changed. Right, and, right. It's not even the you know, same anymore. Commercial dairy has changed mm-hmm. over 100 years. Well, man, this is a product that, what, like NASA invented in what, the it's 60s? The, it's the most what? recent of anything we've talked about on, on this program, for sure. Right. Right? Yeah, very little is, historical tale. Very, yeah. It's hard to get data from what before 1960, yeah. you know, the Kennedy era. So BPA, that was another big thing. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what it is, but one of the things the big regulatory bodies are saying is, ah, just BPA. That's the only thing you need to be worried about. And I kind of go... Really? Well, wait a minute now. <laughs> this is literally a petroleum product. And okay. We've narrowed it down to one possible. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now we're even more uneasy. Right. But, right. but really, it does come down to what, what is happening to the plastics holding the food in the microwave. Right. You put it on for a minute. What is happening? What is getting leaked into the food is probably the biggest concern, I'm assuming, 
as to our exposure to it, plastics. Most like I would agree with you because the reuse that right. happens. Right. I, I, right. I microwave my lunch every day in here yes. in plastic containers. I'm gonna start dumping it on a paper plate. But wow, wow, you know, yeah. But yeah, um, so I did find some peer reviewed data that was interesting. This this one mainly talks about new containers, mm -hmm. the, the food delivery, the whatever, whatever. Um, so this is from sciencedirect.com. Um, they are peer-reviewed journals. They report to, I think it's called pubmed.gov or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. Um, the, the title of the article, Microplastics from Consumer Plastic Food Containers. Containers. Are we consuming it? <clears throat> what they came to in summary, very long, and in fact, man, these these that, that's a one word answer. Peer reviewed things, there, yes or no, would right. be the, would be the right. preference to the question. <laughs> well, they were the most direct, I think. Okay. Um, um, well, of the three. well, kudos to at least organizations like that who will share information freely. Yeah. I well, again, peer reviewed, right? Mm -hmm. So the the reading, the comprehension level was yeah. a little above my. <laughs> How about a yeah. non peer, <laughs> non colleague? Can I get the dumb down to the cliff notes? Are we consuming the... it? Yes, yeah. yes, Scott, right. we are. <laughs> well, so here's what they did say: they determined. Um, so think about a pack, a pack of you know plastics that you might buy. Mm -hmm. They determined, quote. The average weight of isolated microplastics per pack to be 12 milligrams, 38 milligrams, and 3 milligrams. That was kind of depending on size, shape. Okay. Wh what have you. That, that make up what it is? Or yeah, that you like, like if you get a pack of, you know, three big ones. Okay. It was okay. going to have a higher. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So uh, uh, they went on to say new plastic containers can be an important source of direct human environmental exposure to microplastics. Wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, that I, I thought, okay, well, let me go see what the FDA has to say about it. Mm. Right? Yeah. So the FDA statement, this is one of many they put out. Um, studies pursued by FDA's National Center for Toxicological Research. Nice job. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> have shown no effects of BPA from low dose exposure. So no effect I find hard to believe. From the FDA? From the FDA. Via the plastic industry or just pure FDA? Pursued by the uh, study. This is a statement from the FDA. Okay, okay. Quote, studies pursued by FDA's National Center for Toxicological Research. Huh. But again, why just BPA? What else? First, you're telling me there's no results right, or right. no harmful results. Right. But wow. we're looking at one. So we've isolated that one. <laughs> that, well, that one. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like wheat and gluten, I guess. Right. You, you know. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the the guys with no agenda. Mm. Wink. Um, the Plastic Industry Association. Their statement was quote. Plastic food and beverage containers may be used safely in the freezer, microwave, dishwasher, or a combination of all three when these uses are labeled on the package. Don't nuke your pasta in a water bottle. That's where I would begin. <laughs> <laughs> if you take anything away from this particular <laughs> podcast, let that be number one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it out of the microwave. And it is so tough when there's a conflict of interest like that. It's almost like hearkening back to the 90s when, you know, you had that line of all the tobacco executives. Right. And none of them believe tobacco. Right. What It's like... Do you have to work for the industry and say these uh, things? Right. <laughs> Thank you to the folks over at that association who shared the info. You know, but, it's, you, know. you mentioned the industries, but you, I mean, well, you're a little older than I am, so you mm. should remember this. But you know, the ads: nine out of ten doctors say oh, that yes. camel whatever. Is Three out of four doctors smoke camel cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a big thing for a while. <laughs> right, right. So obviously, influenced opinions right. we don't value much around here. Um, it's pretty skeptical. This is a 
there's a lot of skepticism here, and yeah. rightfully so. I think it's healthy skepticism, but I mean, at the very least, we are surrounded with plastics, and right. now we're finding it in you know in the ocean waters, pretty yep. much everywhere. There are microplastic even growing into plants. Into the plants, right? So it is a little sobering, but at the very least, if you can lessen yeah. your exposure to it, and especially keep it away. From yeah, the well, and that I guess advice. we kind of skipped over the part of why should you care? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've had enough exposure sure. on a timeline to really know long term. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, oh my gosh, when was a microwave invented? You, you know, <laughs> we got ours somewhere in the mid to early '80s. That's, That's all same here for sure. Same yeah. here. Yeah. So they did one study. Um, it was on some rats, and I don't know how they got microplastics into them. Whether it was food supply, don't even or want to think about scientific it. Yeah, manipulation, yeah. Yeah. but. But they did, those rats did demonstrate um, reduced function of the white blood cell, hmm. which of course, yeah. if, if I'm correct, is immune and healing and, yeah, you know. Pretty vital, so, pretty vital to your health. So. Yeah. It looks like it could be a big deal. Um, I would Not enough highly time. encourage doing your own homework. Um, do a little or just reading. playing it safe. You yeah. know, I mean, we don't, like you say, we just referenced the tobacco industry. How many years until we found out that it was actually a cancer causing problem? Right. You know, decades. And even then there was pushback. Even in the 90s, there was pushback from, oh, yeah. from on the executive yeah. level. So this one, we're a little soon, but it, long term effects, we really don't know. But yeah, boy, and it, maybe we'll do a, a deeper dive. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and try and really kind of peel back these layers because, yeah. uh, it seems to be one of those where there wasn't a lot of really clear information mm -hmm. that wasn't, I mean, you can go to YouTube and pull up a million different videos about right, it, right. But, but the real hard evidence, right. um, peer reviewed stuff. It's worth checking out though. Yeah. And we're thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it guys. Microplastics yeah. suck. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, questions, comments, concerns, hit us at snackcast at yes.fit. Don't forget to stay moving. See ya!